Less than 10 years ago, flying for the regional airlines paid less than flipping burgers. But today, that has changed and in a big way. We're talking about flying for the airlines in the hangar. Welcome to In The Hangar, I'm Christy Wong. And I'm Bailey Ward. And of course, we'd like to start this video off by thanking our sponsors, all of which are linked below. Christy, who are we talking to today? We are talking to a couple of airline pilots. Now, you guys know I don't talk often about my job and flying for the airlines. Um, because I, I try to keep that separate, but it's okay, because today we actually have my boss. Uh-oh. <laughs> Robert Nieder is the Director of Flight Operations for Envoy, which is my airline, and then of course we have a fan favorite, uh, Joey Johnson, <laughs> who flies for? American Airlines. American Airlines. So guys, thank you so much for joining Glad us to today. Here. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, well, we're here to talk about flying for the airlines specifically. And I actually wanna talk about flying for the regionals because the dynamic has changed a lot. You used to be a regional I pilot did. for, All the way for back Eagle. To, uh, 89, that's correct. You're an old Eagle guy. <laughs> old Eagle guy. In fact, Rob and I were hired just weeks apart. Yeah, you guys wow. actually know each other, yeah. which I thought was kind of fun. All right, well, let's <laughs> talk about that. Uh, well, we first met in college. <laughs> we'll keep those stories on the down low. For right, you. okay. Uh, we flew together on the uh, college flight team, and then I left college to go to a different school. I think you stayed behind and finished. Yeah, right? I stayed at Monroe yeah. and uh, finished up my four-year degree there, and then wound up flying charter, flight instructor and charter at the airport, uh, Fleeman Aviation, what it's called back then, uh, small FBO. And then you guys both wound up at Eagle. Yeah. Yeah, he disappeared for a few years, and I disappeared, and we wound up at Eagle. He was in <laughs> class ahead of me. Okay. So, okay, I want to, the thing that I struggle with with people today that talk about the regionals is the regionals today look vastly different than what they did back in the day. So we're talking 10, 20, 30 years ago, the regionals were completely different. What was it like? What did you guys fly? I, I mean, like, I just want to hear all the stories. <laughs> well, I got started a friend of mine, and we had no idea where to go or what to do. You're just flying charter or flight instruction, just waiting to get this amount of flight time that you didn't know what, how much you had to have back then. And uh, he got picked up by Nashville Eagle, an American Eagle affiliate out of Nashville, and sent me a postcard of this ugly Metro liner. <laughs> okay. And said, I'm an airline pilot, you should come too. <laughs> so I sent my application in, uh, interviewed shortly thereafter, wound up going to work for Nashville Eagle, class of six, turned out to be the class behind Joey. Um, Spent a few weeks in class. Uh, they said, okay, half of y'all have to go to Raleigh-Durham. Where's that, right? <laughs> there, there, was no, there was no internet. Can you say that one more time? <laughs> have to get the Atlas out. I'm expected to be in Nashville, right? So three of us go to Raleigh-Durham um, and stayed there for a year. And then the airline started expanding because uh, Eastern was having their demise in Miami. Mm -hmm. Americans said, let's expand the hub in Miami. So they bought a bunch of jet streams and I wound up making captain on the jet stream at the end of the year, pretty quick upgrade back then. Wow. Uh, nine months for me. Wow. Yeah. About the same here. Wow. Yeah. So captain in Miami on a jet stream starting in uh, January of 90. So was there a time limit? Like, did you have to get to a thousand hours to be a captain? No, there was no, it was all, it's all seniority back then. It, wow. Of course, nobody was getting hired with 500 hours back then either. Uh, right. I had, I was the lowest time guy in my class and I had 1800. Okay. Wow. Right. wow. And coming from charter, you had learned how to get around the airspace on your own. Yeah. You know, flying Barons and King Airs and things like that. Um, so you had the knowledge to do it, right? So upgrade came as fast as you could get seniority wise. Wow. And when I got hired on, it was like 200 guys. Yeah. yeah. And for perspective now, of course, to get hired with the regional airlines and actually some of the LCCs like Spirit and Frontier, I mean, you hit that 1500 hour minimum and you are gone. It's like night and day. It is night, it is and, night day. and day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that was the path back then. If you didn't go military, it was you flight instructed, you flew bank checks, uh, charter, corporate. I wound up corporate in a King Air, and uh, I was trying to bypass the regionals and go straight to a main line, but my problem was, uh, unlike uh, uh, Rob, who stayed in school and finished his degree, I didn't finish my degree, and in that uh, time of, uh, frame, if you didn't have a degree, they weren't interested. You know, It didn't matter that you were a good pilot or had a lot of flight time, they really wanted to see that piece of paper. So, Why but, is that? 
I'm not sure why it okay. was such that way back then, but that's that just, just it was the that way. Was the way. Okay. That was well, the I've way. kind of heard that that's still how it is today. Like even having that degree under your belt is still really important. You know what? Most of the airlines have dropped their degree requirements really? now. Yeah, yeah. Wow. There's, there's, there's no more requirement anymore. Um, does Delta still have theirs? I don't. I think they dropped theirs too. They dropped theirs. Okay. Well. Um, okay. But the the issue was um, getting to the 1,500 hours for the ATP. But if you go to a four-year degree accredited school, mm -hmm. you can get that with a thousand hours. And if you have a two-year accredited school, you can get that with twelve fifty. So it's all about getting to the ATP requirements to come work for any airline. Okay. Um, so we start hiring folks at nine fifty because they're going to get flight time in the simulator that counts mm -hmm. towards it and things like that. Um, so it's a whole different world. Uh, back then, we all had a lot of flight time. Uh, the college degree was prefer definitely preferred back then. Maybe yeah. not required one hundred percent. Maybe if you knew somebody or you know friends and family, yeah, I mean, things like that. But the, and I, like, got, I got a lot of rejection letters back then because I didn't have the four-year degree. Yeah, that's all I just kept there. pressing forward, pressing forward, pressing forward. Then when I got the call from Nashville Eagle, mm -hmm. um, I actually turned the job down initially and said, "Not interested." You know, I'm already flying a turboprop, <laughs> and uh, because they were offering me a position in uh, Marquette, I believe it was Simmons actually. Was, oh was yeah, mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. and I. Uh, Plotly said, no, you're uh, dealing with a southern boy, and uh, I don't go where it snows. So. Yeah. And then they called back about two weeks later and offered me the job in Nashville. And I started off in the Metro Liner, uh, the twos and the threes, which were 17 and 19 seat. Yeah. And um, I was offered uh, Raleigh as well initially because they were just acquiring the Raleigh operation. And um, But you were able to bid back to, to Nashville. So before I even completed training, I had been awarded back to Nashville, so I never actually left. And it was nice because at the time I was flying corporate, I was in a King Air, just 60 miles west of Nashville. So, it was, so you were right a, there. I yeah. was right there. And you basically went from turboprop to turboprop, so Correct. it was a fairly easy transition. Fairly easy transition, with the exception that the King Air was a fully equipped, uh, you know, state-of-the-art aircraft with all the latest and greatest technology in it. And when they put me in the Metro Liner, <laughs> I, if I recall, some of the twos had Beechcraft attitude indicators in them <laughs> uh, with traditional... Um, uh, DGs and uh, CDIs, mm -hmm. so it was truly like flying a 172 again. We had no flight directors, we had no autopilots, we had no yaw dampers, wow. and if you were lucky, you got one that had Freon air uh, in the summertime to try to keep you cooled <laughs> off. Oh my goodness. And the right seat would have bare minimum equipment. Yeah. Nothing like the captain's. If the captain had a nice DG or, mm -hmm. or an HSI, had, oh. you were really lucky if you had an HSI. It was like flying a Cessna from that side, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. But got the job done. Yeah. So, okay, what airplanes did you wind up flying for Eagle through your, your regional So the, the whole time I was there, and we had a, a variety of aircraft at Eagle because ultimately it was a culmination of eight different airlines. Right. right? And a lot of people don't know this, but um, MQ, which is on voice, like identifier now, comes from Marquette. Mm -hmm. That's wow. correct. Simmons. Comes from Marquette with Simmons, Simmons Airlines. Yeah, that Simmons. Is correct. I didn't know that either. And that, yeah. certificate and everything yeah. goes back uh, to that. Nashville was 8N. I, yep. I don't remember what the eight inch supposedly stood for, but that's it's just but yeah, a, it was just a conglomerate though yeah. of these airlines that got meshed together, and they're like, "You are American Eagle now." You're American Eagle. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a lot of history there. So, uh, but no, I flew the Metro Two, the Metro Three, um, and then went to the the uh, Saab because when we got, I had upgraded um, at, before I was senior enough to hold the jet stream, and uh, they considered that a lateral move, a 19 seat to a 19 seat. So since Rob had put off his upgrade, he was able to get the new airplane with the air conditioning and all the state-of-the-art technology. Uh, <laughs> state-of-the-art. <laughs> <And I, laughs> no yaw damper. Yeah, exactly. And brand new ADF. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I was stuck flying the Metro Liner to Tupelo, Mississippi, and places like that. But um, And then I went to the Saab 340. And uh, fortunately, that was a really nice upgrade because we had the B-model Saabs, which was the latest and greatest aircraft uh, airframe. And uh, from that, and, and you got a flight attendant with that, which was unheard of Ooh. at the regionals. You had a, now you had a flight attendant, and we were putting meals on the airplanes, and we were really up upstaging the, the jet streams, at least we thought, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> um, and then as we began to merge with some of the other airlines, uh, along came the ATRs, the 42s, and then the 72s. And then when Command Airways was yeah. brought into to the loop, we got the Shorts 360s. Um, I didn't fly that one either. That was the, I think that's the box that the Casa comes yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> and then eventually we got the 145, the Jets. And that was, of course, a uh, post, well, just prior to 9-11 was, I think it was I was going to say the 145, that was revolutionary, That too, was revolutionary. Because yeah. that was like, the regionals were like, you were expected to fly a turboprop, but then all of a sudden came Jets. That's correct. Right. And you flew the Metroliners, too, yep. right? Metro, Jetstream, Saab, ATRs. You flew and them the all. The 145s. <laughs> and the ones. Didn't fly the... Uh, 
shorts or the Canada Air. Okay, yeah. so you got out of the shorts too, so, the, the yeah. plane that only a mother could up, That was yeah. mostly, mostly up north. <laughs> it's an unpressurized north airplane, yeah. It was yeah. flown out yeah. of... Uh, no autopilot. New York, uh, yeah. the short hops. Yeah, mm -hmm. I rode in the back once, that was enough. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> the bench seat at the Were very you back. cargo? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so, so the then... Story, the stories then were that uh, the trash was dumped in the uh, in the river as they were coming in to approach on Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm pressurized airplane, slide the window open, get rid of the trash. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So yeah, so then um, so then Eagle got the 145. So what was that like? For it was you pretty guys? cool. So I think we took them 97 and really put them online at 98. 98, that's right? correct. Um, and back then, guys that checked out as captain on the Embraers, the 145 series, we had the 135s and the 140s also. Uh, after two years, they would get the float to American. Yeah. Whoa. So if you wow. started in 98. 2000 came around, you got to go to American. Oh, when, no. when your seniority came up on our list, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And it, so it was a great deal back then. Um, shortly thereafter, 9-11 happened and put a pause on that for years, right? And it reversed the whole thing. And we had a, back then we had a flow back. Yeah. So, yeah. so American guys could, could come back to Eagle. Oh. Right? Which would displace Eagle guys. Yeah. 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 So the idea happened? behind that was the, the scope protection, yep. you know, at main line, uh, and furlough protection, should something happen uh, that these guys would have a place to go to and not be put mm -hmm. to the streets while we're flying their routes with, with smaller jets. Right. That was, and that was the concept, anyway. Right. But even still back then, even with the 145s, you guys are bringing jets on and everything, mm -hmm. the pay was not stellar, was it? No. Let's talk I, about that for a minute, because I think that's yeah. really, really important to this. Yeah, um, back then, I would say the captains were probably making seventy-five to 80000 a year. Captains. Captains okay. on that 145, right? Uh, the first now officer. 145. Now you keep in mind, we didn't get those until 98. Right. We hired oh. in 89. Yeah. Oh, that so was this crazy. is 11 years, you know, 9, 10, 11 years down the road. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. Do you mind no. if I ask no. what the pay was like back in like the late 80s and early I remember, 90s? I remember specifically um, <laughs> <laughs> that I, I, I got on the property in March and coincidentally I'm in ground school in class and they come in and they say the union has signed a deal with the company. So everybody on property now goes to year two pay. Ooh. So that was, right? Yeah, pay raise. And, and, right my, and the salary, if you figure out by hours and all that stuff, back then it was, you know, a reserve guy got 75 hours and anything, stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. But I figured out that my salary that year was going to be 15300 Ooh, big wow. spender. <laughs> Which was higher than the 13800 it was going to be. Right, right. When they signed right. the contract. And we walked right? in the door. And yeah. it was, uh, my dad was a, he's a retired Delta pilot now, but back then he said, uh, I make that much a month. Yeah. <laughs> Here I am thinking I'm getting all this money, right? Yeah. And I w I learned that a lot of the regional carriers, even like back in the 2000s, it was in the contract that you were not allowed to file for food stamps while in your uniform. I've heard that. We didn't have that in our contract. Right, right? yeah. Heard, yeah. Um, and that's probably true because I became the chief pilot in New York around 2000, right around 9-11. And uh, I had some first officers that had four or five kids, and they would tell me that they're qualifying for New York, you know, wow. assistance, right? Oh. Which is a shame, right? That shows the, the industry at the time, because it was supposed to be a stepping stone, right? You were supposed to be there for two to five years and move yeah, to yeah, Maine, but then all this economic stuff happened, nine eleven, things like that, just puts a, Want the a rush on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, the industry's been very cyclic. If we've been in it over thirty years now, uh, if you go from when we were hired eighty nine to today's date, it's thirty four years. Yeah. Wow. Uh, almost to date. Mm -hmm. And um, it typically goes in about a 10 year cycle. You know, you'll have your ups and then you're down and then back up and back down. And so in what was early 90s, American furloughed, mm -hmm. and there was kind of a downturn in the industry. It didn't pick back up till 98. Mm -hmm. oh, we no. get the jets, everything is looking up, you know, and mm -hmm. we're going to move. Finally, after 10 years, we're going to move. And then 9 11 happens, and then we're right back on the down cycle. And then 07, uh, things start to pick back up. They start hiring again and then it kind of tapers off for a bit, mm -hmm. and then the gap hits. And he knows what I'm talking about. Not everyone calls it the gap, but there was a 10-year gap post 9-11 oh, yeah. where there was literally no hiring being done. Oh, we call right. it the lost years. So there's yeah, a lost, the lost decade. decade. Yeah. Lost decade. Mm -hmm. And so, and Amongst that the pilot has, group, that's what yeah. we call it. And <laughs> if you look at uh, the number of pilots that are hired annually by all of the airlines combined, and multiply that number by 10, this is why we are in such a deficit right now for pilots in the industry, yeah. and this is what, and that is what has triggered the good times, if you will, for mm -hmm. up and coming at, uh, aviators such as yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. what routes would you say there are now? Like, are people still going through the regionals and then working their way up to the majors? Like, how does that look like now? 
well, yep. you probably know so, more. So uh, the majority of our folks, our young folks, uh, coming through mostly colleges, um, we have uh, agreements and deals with over 70 colleges where they get this accredited degree so they can come work Ooh. for us with less flight time than the 1500 for the ATP, right? They get the restricted okay. ATP with 1000 so 950 hours. And nowadays, um, they start school. Uh, once they get their commercial license, we'll give them an interview at headquarters. Mm -hmm. uh, pending their CFI certificate, mm -hmm. um, then we'll hire them as an employee for us. They start accruing company seniority uh, for vacation. Uh, we actually pay them and they can travel around the world just like any other airline pilot, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then once they get to their flight time of their ATP, the 950, or depends on the school they're at, um, we'll put them in class for us. When we hire you, you are an American Airlines pilot. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. Oh. Right? Um, so you come to work for us, you're a co pilot for typically two or three years. Nowadays, you're flowing over after you're captain for two or three years, and it's all based on seniority and how, how the time goes, how much is American hiring, uh, and just how the industry's moving, right? Um, so it's working out very well these days for that. That's the typical footprint. Now, we do get a bunch of folks that come from the Army. You know, guys go fly choppers for a few years, um, Air Force from everywhere really right. corporate uh, right now because of this whole uh, corona issue and everybody early retirements and uh, the, the little bit of furloughs and the backlog and you hear about pilot shortage today right mm -hmm. um, it's not so much a pilot shortage we have a lot of folks that want to come work for us right now we have a shortage of captains ah. because the major airlines hire the captains right you can float to American as a captain you can't go as a co-pilot right I mean you can but that's in your list is long um, so the majors pick up all the captains from the regionals so it's a big draw on the captain side. Now, co pilots have to get to that 1,000 hours of 121 time to become a captain. So if we don't have the captains to fly with the co-pilots, you have too many co-pilots, they sit on reserve and don't get any flight time. Right. <laughs> so it's a balancing act. So right now we're looking to hire direct entry captains, what we call it. Folks that have close to 1,000 hours of the 121 PIC time and they're paying big bucks. I was gonna say, it is insane. I've seen the like bonus structure and I was like. Oh. Yeah, at the very least right now, if you have 950 hours and we offer you a captain job, the day before you start class, they write you a check for $100,000. Huh. Wow. Yeah, exactly. That's huh. like some nice mm -hmm. avionics for the warrior, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad I'm already employed. Right. You were a flow to American, right? I was. My flow was not typical, however, because okay. of, because of 9/11. Right. Um, I qualified on the jet in uh, 2000, and uh, had a flow through number issued at that time, <clears throat> and would have moved over in uh, 02, approximately November, December of 02, and uh, just roughly a year prior, September of 01, we had 9/11, and that shut everything down, and um, it stayed that way for 10 years. It was. Uh, yeah. When did you finally get over to England? It was um, March. It was almost to the day. It was in March of 2011. Wow. I was it hired March of 89. Yeah, so it was. Yeah, but, it was very stagnant back then. Yeah. But people I mean, were getting frustrated because they had this promise of this career path to American, and you were stuck at the Eagle. Mm -hmm. right? The Eagle. The Eagle, right? <laughs> and, and back then, it was just one. We just had one Eagle, right? Mm -hmm. We, we uh, were American's partner, and it was just one Eagle. Then U.S. Air came along, and now there's a whole bunch of different contractors and type stuff, right? Um, but yeah, it was frustrating for the folks that worked for us. They were beating their heads against the wall. You know, when am I getting my real job? Nobody else is hiring, so they couldn't go anywhere else. And there you were, some guys stuck on food stamps. Yeah. Right, back in that time, it's, it was a shame. It's a different world today. No, I mean a lot of people don't realize. I actually, in my early 20s, I tried to become a pilot back in 2007. I did my very first Discovery flight ever um, in North Las Vegas. You know, 172, I was in Texas paint, which I thought, think is funny now. Yeah, it had like the Texas flag like on right. it. Um, and I like realized right away, this is what I wanna do. This is what I was meant to do. I love airplanes, let's do this. And then I started talking to people who were pilots and I started networking and it was freaking terrible. You know, it cost, at that time it was $40,000 to go to like ATP or something to get your like zero to hero and they spit you out with a fresh CFI, but then like there weren't any CFI jobs. And sure, you were legal to go get an FO job, you know, at 250 hours, but that like, let's get real, that wasn't happening. So you were gonna have to 
scramble to find a job as a flight instructor making like, I don't know, two dollars an hour and then I'm exaggerating but <laughs> but um, but then um, you were gonna have to keep that job for 2,000 hours typically or more um, I have friends now that like they took that pathway and they they've got horror stories about what it was like and um, you know at that time I, I couldn't do it and I think a lot of stories like that are what scares like people of my generation, which obviously we've progressed so much and the airline industry has progressed so much, but even now like that, those bad reps are like what scares people my age. Well, let me tell you. <laughs> so, 2016 rolls around, I'm making good money now as an allergy specialist and I'm like, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna do this, right? Look, I mean the airlines are just doing this, right? Mm -hmm. Just like, Stocks are just up, everything's good. And I'm like, I'm doing it, right? 2020, like I literally, my in-doc day with Envoy was March 9th of 2020. <laughs> I was the last wow. class to get through before they <laughs> shut everything down because this like crazy yep. virus took over the mm -hmm. world and I, I got furloughed. <laughs> like I, yeah. I, I could not have imagined when I started flight training that I would be a furlough. You know, people would joke with me, well, you're not a real pilot until you You've get furloughed. furloughed. Mm -hmm. Right, well, guess what? <laughs> I got she is. Yeah, I, I am the pilot. Got the like. badge. But you know, here's the thing though, is uh, the one thing that I will say about Envoy in particular, uh, I felt like the airline handled that very well. I felt like you guys in management actually did a great job of communicating with us. And um, I mean, you called us personally to tell us what was happening and that you were sorry, but that when we do get recalled, you know, it's gonna look like this. We're gonna go back through long-term. I mean, that was, that was a really good maneuver, I felt like, on the airline part. Because I had friends at SkyWest that got furloughed. They did not get that, you know, and at other airlines, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, you know, to, you know, it's a, not a great situation, but I felt like it was done right. And then we, we got recalled, and now it's like, it was not just recall, it was panic recall. Okay, mm -hmm. oh my God, we need pilots. We need people. And now, like fast forward, here we are making crazy amounts of money that 2007 Christy could have never imagined. imagined. I, never, I mean, I could me. you guys have ever no. imagined as regional, you know, former like regional line pilots, could you have imagined? I recall a conversation I had with our director of flight operations uh, back in the late 80s, early 90s when I first got hired. Actually, it was in the 90s, um, and we were going through a contractual negotiation again. We were, uh, Eagle was represented by APA, if you recall. First, yep. Yeah, the first uh, 10 years or so, yep. Yep. which is the same air, uh, union that represents the American pilots. But I remember having this conversation with the director of ops going, oh my gosh, I'm making $40,000 a year as a captain. This is ridiculous. I should be getting paid a lot more money than this as a captain. And he said to me, this is not a job you're going to stay at. This is a stepping stone to the next job. Yeah. And now today, it has turned into a professional career as a regional pilot. Yeah. And a lot of people that, that, are That was staying. the deal back then. It was supposed to be, a, the business model was way different. Yeah. yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Get in, get out, in theory, because everybody wanted to go to the major for the, but then it stalled, and people had to learn to live on that, which got the, the rates up a little bit, right, yeah. over time. It's a whole different model now. Um, even when we first got the jets, so early 2000, you could go cross country on Eagle. You go from New York to Arkansas, X and A, mm -hmm. and then from X and A to LA, LA. on one connection on Eagle. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> American had no part in it, right? And the Caribbean. And, oh, and we, the Caribbean. Yeah, we can, went to Nassau from Dallas. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We, Whoa. Yeah, you can go, it's, it's a different world now. So a different model. Um, the rates have gone up quite a bit, and you've mm -hmm. probably seen it all online, right? It's crazy money um, compared to what we've seen, right? So pe people right. today wouldn't say it's crazy money, it's what they deserve. Okay, I mean. Right. <laughs> but the, the economy of the airline is, appears to be supporting it now because you've seen ticket prices are up, mm -hmm. but the planes are still pretty full. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh yeah. People are still traveling. I know, I'm flying them. <laughs> they are full. It's, 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 it's great for the airline people. It's great that the passengers can go places now. Um, everybody was stagnant for two years, three years, and I think they were all bunched up, right? So people are like, I'm not sitting home anymore, I'm going on vacation. And I don't uh, care what it costs. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and business travel is starting to come back. It's not quite what it used to be, um, but once that comes back, then the uh, financial health of the airlines will be, they got a lot to pick up for the past two, three years, right? right. Congress helped a little bit, but mm -hmm. that's just really a, that was a little band-aid, right? Yeah, so. I mean, are we even regional pilots anymore, though, compared to what you guys started with, you know, puddle no, jumping and No, we were called whatever. puddle jumpers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, well, we were flying metros and jet streams and stuff. You went out, sat for two or three hours and flew back to the hub, just waiting for the connections, <laughs> right? You just, you were timing the, the mainline airplanes come in and out, yeah. that's what we did. And then they started connecting the dots with the sobs, 
because I was a Miami pilot. That's when we first started the point to point service. Yeah, remember that? Yeah. Because yeah. I was in Miami and then we'd fly uh, to Tallahassee or somewhere. Then I'd go to Nashville. So one night you'd be laying over in Key West. The next night you're in Louisville in the snow. It's like, I'm a Miami guy. I don't yeah. have a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> it's not right. But so they started figuring that out. And Americans started figuring out how to make money with that. And now, man, you get on RJ's. RJ's, we almost have a hub out of Austin, right? Have yeah, you yeah, we Austin? do. Yeah. From Austin, you can go to Jamaica. Right? About anywhere you, you want, yeah. Mexico, on us, on Eagle. I mean, I can attest right. as a 175 pilot, I mean, when we joke about being regional, you know, we'll, like I flew mm -hmm. to Toronto the other day from DFW. Yeah. Toronto, Canada. I'm like, I just, I'm like, oh, regional, you yeah. know? So <laughs> but, our region now is the U.S., Canada, Yeah, exactly, Mexico, the Northern right. Hemisphere. Right. We, yeah. We have, even have authority for South America because we fly wow. to mm -hmm. San Andres, which is owned by Columbia. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. So that's in, in South America, it's crazy. It's a, yeah, it's, it's definitely a different world now. So if you are considering becoming an airline pilot or if you guys are considering becoming an airline pilot, I mean, now is the time to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. I would definitely. So you don't have to drive yourself to the hotel anymore. No. Oh, and my the, gosh. the uh, company Toyota truck that was used as the ramp truck <laughs> and the fuel truck and the baggage truck. That was truck. a thing? That was a thing. Don't have to put the carry-on bags don't in the nose. Don't have to put carry-on bags in the nose. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Yeah. Don't have to close the door. Don't have to brief the passengers. And I think, I think that's a big thing, honestly, especially with guys that are in the airlines now, like the younger generation oh. of regional pilots, is the perspective. They don't have a lot of it, and it's and that's not their fault. But like honestly, I, that's why I wanted to bring you guys on and talk to you about it because perspective is huge, and it's a big reason why I'm very happy where I'm at now, mm -hmm. and I'm like really excited about mm -hmm. the future of my career because there's just so much opportunity there. Yeah, I never would imagine I'd be flying a regional jet that can go six hours. Right. You know, full <laughs> EFIS, any kind of FMS you want to do, a cars and printer does all the work for you. Uh, it's got an autopilot. Automatic weight and balance. <laughs> <and rain. Autopilot. laughs> yeah. Airplane flights, and it truly is back when we were kids, you hear about, oh, the airplane flies itself. All you do is put the gear in flaps. And that's what this airplane is. You, you, can, wow. yeah. you can literally yeah, just do the gear. Yeah, it's fully automated. Wow. It's amazing. Yeah. I'll show you. You got to yes. yeah, you, yeah, you put it in reverse, but that's about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, guys, thank you so much for coming on. It's been such a pleasure. And I know we could probably talk for hours about this. But... For sure. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, please like, subscribe, uh, share our content. Um, I don't know. I don't know what else to say after that. I mean, that was amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, the time definitely is now to start taking the step forward to become a regional or an airline pilot. I mean, the market seems amazing for it. So. Yeah, and we want to thank our sponsors for helping us bring our content to us as well. We'll see you guys next time. In the hangar. <laughs>